Oh, failed to get root permission. Do we record? Okay, recording in progress. Great. Let's see if we can get some. Uh, anyway, I may actually be saying, you know, in regards to the grammar, in regards to God's name, but I'll go with the E sound and not the R sound. But uh, if I hit into a grammar in regards to uh, the name Yehovah, um, I'm going to follow all the other rules of grammar that is actually found in scripture. So it may be wrong, but that's you know the best that I can go by. Um, so let's see. Let's see. Let's see if we can get some. Uh, yeah, the toilet is a perfect place. It has some rustic stick or whatever it's called. Let's try this. Yeah. 
to actually see in the English, you know, you have the two dots, but anyway. Say, say, 
na mi ya di ve hi spati kol me so sa raga ra di sha ve sha pa ta ve rol ma ta Yeah. <laughs> 
the first two ch chapters of Hosea anyway so that was pretty good just practicing so I'll see if nothing really much oh uh, still practicing uh, there may be some arrows it seems like some of the places I uh, slipped you know it's it's I'm trying to look at the English and the Hebrew at the same time because many times the English doesn't really you know show what the Hebrew actually says. And again, there are some small rules here and there in regards to the Hebrew where it doesn't really say that, you know, sound and so forth. And it says another sound, even if it, you know, says otherwise. And that may have something to do with dialects and so forth. Uh, I saw a program where they had like three dialects of Hebrew and you could choose different. I can't remember the name of it, but you, it was like, you know, reading the Torah and uh, it was three dialects. I was thinking about something, you know, in regards of the lost 10 tribes. Well, people say there's, you know, 10 tribes that are lost and all that. And a lot of Jews actually, you know, were still in Babylon, according to what I understand or what I know of. That there was a lot of Jews still in, in Babylon and in that area uh, mm. that wasn't that hasn't actually gone to Israel at that point. But that doesn't mean that there wasn't actually people from all the 12 tribes in the land of Israel. And there goes this story in regards of the Greeks. And the Greeks wanted the Pentateuch, which is the Torah, the five first books of Moses. And they, you know, this high-standing Greek, as I understand it. Uh, maybe there may be some details that are wrong. But as I understand this, you know, Greek, they were collecting all the all the books around the world. And sadly, this library, uh, where was it? Uh, but this library apparently was, uh, yeah, destroyed at some point. There's a lot of libraries where they get destroyed either on purpose or by a natural disaster. And, um, you know, many times it's actually on purpose, you know, where uh, you know, different groups tend to just burn the books and so forth and burn their libraries. And so we all the knowledge that, you know, we could have had today. Well, somebody burned it. 
you know, and may it may even have been, you know, a lot of pagan sources and all that, but it would maybe have, you know, pointed to something in regards of a worldwide flood and so forth, and a lot of the things that, you know, would actually validate. Oh, well, we have things still, we have, still have a lot of things that validates the Bible, but, you know, it's, it's, it seems like it's a, in some sense a, a, a thing of Satan, you know, destroying things so he can begin to deceive people because if we don't have the, the information about these things and you know we still have a lot of sources in regards to the worldwide flood and all that but if he can take you know a lot of things away i heard that the that the muhammadans actually destroyed 90 percent of the classical sources of the books so 90 percent that's nine with a zero of the of the classical writings were pretty much done away with and uh, and then we have the the dark ages where people were not allowed to uh, read the Bible like a thousand years from 500 as I understand it to 1500. So that's a thousand years where people were in the dark ages and the church, so-called you know the the Roman Catholic Church, you know whatever they want to call it, uh, went around and killed people for for having the scriptures in their own language and spreading the good news and so forth about Yeshua. I wonder if that church actually has anything to do with Yeshua, you know? It's just, come on, you know, they hunt down the people. They, did, they didn't want the word to be translated. They didn't want the word to be in the hands of the people, you know? You know, who would do that? Who wouldn't want the word in the hands of the people? Oh, I know Satan wouldn't want that because if the word, if the people had the word of God in their hands, oh, they could expose Satan. Oh yeah, and he has many lies and deceptions. Hmm. Now, of course, the problem is not today that we don't have access to it. The problem is that people don't want to read it and don't take it seriously and so forth. You know, so it's, uh, so, and, and he, you know, Satan still has his, sheep and wolf clothing out there lying about the bible you know all these <laughs> so many of the those so-called shepherds that should actually shepherd the flock is actually just you know ripping them off uh leading them astray and uh you know oh we don't believe in a world by flood oh we don't believe in around six thousand years creation oh we believe in millions of years ah that's no problem you know the bible and evolution goes hand in hand what are you talking about you know these wolves it's pretty easy to then you know spot a wolf in sheep clothing now one thing is to be wrong and you know sincerely wrong in some sense where you just you know you learn and you oh, oh i found out something and then repent of it Another thing is to actually have a big education and so forth and then go out and actually willingly deceive the people, you know, even knowing that it's wrong. Uh, may, may, maybe some of them are not, in, you know, knowing it, but I know that some of them absolutely know that they are actually not following the Bible and just, you know. So anyway, it's very sad and I'm probably more than, than we actually, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people apparently also in regards to shepherds don't even believe the Bible, but they have, need to have a job, right? And they've taken this huge education and all that and not even believing in God <laughs> and believing in the Bible itself and thinking it is like, you know, fairy stories. <laughs> That's a pretty bad word, but uh, I should, that should be another word. Like, uh, it, it, I have to find some, some other word in regard to fairy sounds a little like satanic, you know, going into the into the so-called new age whatever the occult in regards to all these things but anyway you know the demon, demonic stuff and all that but anyway they think it's like not true you know you just take little of the scriptures there's some truth in it but you can't actually take the stories seriously and all that just uh but anyway back to the greek thing and all that so this guy apparently this greek guy collecting a lot of uh collecting a lot of manuscripts you know um of different kinds from all over the world and so forth to this library i think it was alexander the library of alexandra and he's collecting all these books and he wants the according to the story uh he wants he wants the the the, the pentateuch which is the torah which is the first five books of Moses, that, that's what we call them in Denmark. We call them the, the five books of Moses. So the thing is, um, 
The thing is, uh, let's have the moon instead, right? Yeah, here we have the moon. <laughs> Beautiful moon. And uh, that is where we are in the month. Actually, in regards to the background, I shouldn't probably have it on. But, you know, I don't know how you actually make a black screen. I had a black screen at some point, but... You know, there's not really an option to set it to a black screen. I think it had the black screen because I updated it from the from a past. You know, I reset the mobile and and try to get all the information to restore the things and all that. It doesn't restore everything. That's far from it. You know, it's really you know I had this customer service because there's some some ghosting and some retention on the screen and it shows up or uh, and it just gets worse worse and worse and all that. I'm talking with them and all that and one of uh, you know apparently they wrote, oh could you please reset your mobile and all that? <laughs> it's like. Yeah, that does, that's not going to help anything, you know, just going to, you know, well, I'm going to use hours and hours and hours to actually fix it again, you know, and even if it actually restores a lot of the things, you probably will have things that you need to, you know, still go on and say yes to this, yes to that, whatever, and, you know, all the settings and all that, and lo and behold, yeah, it was so... So you have, you go into the program and you need to set the programs up. And if you have a lot of programs, yeah, it's, it takes a lot of uh, time and all that. And, and some of the system settings, where was it that you did this and that and all that. And you need to find out. So I was really not fond of actually doing that. And I you know, knew that was no change in regards to the screen. So I should actually have said to them, no, I'm not going to reset the mobile. But of course, if I'm going to send it back and they're going to give me a new one instead or whatever they are going to do. But the thing is, if I send it back, it can take up to two months to actually get it back. So I have two months without a mobile. Yeah, that's customer service. <laughs> Great. Anyway, now anyway, going back to the Greek. So, and, and you know, the mobile still works and all that. That's exactly, you know, it's, it's nearly a year if it's not a year, but um, so I'm on the last part. I only have a year of warranty and uh, and because I actually already have put in, you know, a warranty claim and all that, it shouldn't be a problem if it actually goes. But, so it's around a year I have had this phone, but it was a pretty expensive phone. So you would actually, you know, uh, <laughs> You wouldn't expect to be, you know, retention, but, you know, they designed these things to actually, you know, go off, you know, have issues. So you can actually go out and buy a new phone and so forth. It's so sad in, our, in regards of uh, our society, in regards to these ways. That's anyway. So back to these Greek things. So apparently this the story goes that he talks to, to the Jews and he says, you know, could you please send, I think it's six people from each of the 12 tribes in regards of scholarship and they then come down and they translate it and the thing is the story goes that he you know could you please send six uh people you know from each of the tribes so if he if he's asking for six jews from each i think it's six you know you have to Let's see, it should be 72 in total if you actually 12 times six. Do we have like a calculator? That's the thing, and you have calculators and all that. It's uh, six times, no, let's just divide it maybe 72 times six and say, oh, it's 12. So six, six, six Jews, oh, that was, you know, they were called Jews at some point. Well, you know, everybody of them were just called Jews in some sense. So, um, uh, but he's asking for six Jews of every tribe, or six uh, Hebrews, six Israelites, whatever you want to call it, uh, from each tribe to come down and translate. I think it's come down at exchange. I think it was the Southern Kingdom in regards of, of uh, from from Israel. So he wants six Jews from each tribe of the twelve tribes to come down and translate the scriptures, the Torah. And I think it takes them 70 days or something like that, according to, and it doesn't really, you know, if, if you're talking about the whole Tanakh, that, you know, 70 days may actually sound maybe a little too much, or maybe a little too little here. Yeah, sorry about that. You know, it, you know, the whole book of the Tanakh, you know, they would be pretty, you know, need to be pretty fast and so forth. Uh, uh, I think, you know, it would take some time, I think, to translate. But if you're only translating five books, it narrows it down. Could you do that on 70 days? Yeah, I think you could probably, if you have the knowledge of both the Greek and the Hebrew and so forth, that's probably a good chance that you could do it in 70 days. I haven't tried it, but it it, uh, it seems uh, it seems like yeah that it would it would be possible I think. And if 
you know, it, it, it also depends of how fast they're riding and all that. They, of course, they didn't have, uh, they didn't have uh, you know, computers and all that. But anyway, I haven't tried it. But anyway, that's the story that, that in regards to the story goes by that way. And there's some other things in regards of, you know, uh, each of them translated it and uh, apparently it was the same and so forth. That's some of the stories. Now, I don't know in regards of the truth in it and all that. But the thing is, if you're making up a story and uh, wasn't actually, you know, people from the 12 tribes in Israel at that point, that's a pretty bad story to make up, <laughs> you know. But, but anyway, so maybe it's, maybe it could be if there wasn't actually, you know, people from the 12 tribes, then maybe it could be a false story in that regard. But maybe there was actually due some... Uh, from uh, all of the 12 tribes in the land of Israel. And I think that would be the case, you know. In the Bible, it talks about when they're returning from Babylon, they are also, I think there's something in, in regards of sending a, a, a message to the Jews also in, in the other areas. Uh, that would be uh, in the Medo-Persia area, but of course, Medo-Persia overtook uh, Babylon. And we have Jews, you know, we have Jews, or the northern kingdom was taken out, uh, taken out by the Assyrians. And I think that became the Medo-Persians area. Uh, I think the Medo-Persians took the Assyrian or something like that. I'm not sure about the, the history, but I think something about that. And then, of course, we have the Babylonians, where the Jews are taken out from the Babylonians. Maybe, oh, maybe the ba yeah, but the Babylonian first took the land and then maybe Medio Persia is coming up. I'm not sure how that works. Sorry about that. It, I can't, but, but anyway, the Assyrians take the northern kingdom out first. Uh, the northern kingdom of, of Israel, or called Israel actually at that point. And then we have the Jews, which is the southern kingdom. The, you know, you have the ten tribes from the, on, on the north and the two tribes on the, on the south. But that, you know, some believe actually there was some exchange. Those that wanted to follow God still would go to the southern kingdom. And those continuing and going astray in regards of abominations. But of course, the southern kingdom also become worse actually than the northern kingdom. So they were punished as well. And so first, the northern king are taking out of the Assyrians. They are coming down, taking them out. And then, of course, the Babylonians are coming to take out the Jews from the south, uh, or the southern kingdom afterwards, uh, later on. So we have a lot of the Jews in the east taking into Assyria, which is medio Persia. I mean, it becomes, you know, in that area in regards to... Uh, so we have a lot of Jews at the east, uh, northeast from Israel, or oh, you know, when they say it, they come from the north, I think it's because the road goes, uh, as I can see, it northward and then it begins to go eastward and go to Babylon again, a little south maybe. But anyway, uh, that is, as I understand it, the trade route also. So when they say from the north and all that, it's because uh, you know they follow the trade routes where the roads probably are and all that. So they come from the north. They don't don't come just from the side. For, for example, if they come from Babylon, they're probably going to take you know go a little like Abraham did. Anyway, Abraham you know went to you know he didn't just take a straight line to uh, to uh, Israel or the Canaan, which it was called at that point with the Canaanites which from uh, from the line of Ham. But anyway, so anyway, so so there's a letter going out to these people and I would think, hey, if you want to go back to uh, to Israel, yeah, well, you would probably go there, you know, to Israel. At some point, you would probably be, you know, uh, you know, you have Jews today that just wants to go to Israel. They have something in them that are, you know, they're singing about Jerusalem and so forth. You would probably also expect that some of the Israelites um, or the Northern Kingdom, those being you know taken out, and would probably some of them would probably seek back. And of course, in the New Testament, we also see at least one from another tribe. I think it is a woman uh, where it talks about, and and that's, I don't know if that's more, but there could be more in regards of. But they were called Jews, of course. You know, they were called Jews by the people. Uh, so. Even if they were for Benjamin, you were a Jew. If you were with this and that, and you know, you were just called a Jew, you know. So, um, but anyway, so the story goes that they take these six uh, people and translate the Torah. And again, so 
So these people are translating the first five books of Moses and not the whole, uh, whole Old Testament. That is apparently added later on or something like that. Not sure how that story goes and all that, but uh, as I understand it, it's only the first, you know, there's different views on it and, you know, it's, but uh, this, as I understand it, it's actually only the first five books of Moses that is actually translated. And of course, it seems like the name may actually have been in the scriptures at that point, but later on in history, apparently it was taken out. And, uh, you know, there's some findings in regards to the Greek where, you know, the name is there. And yeah, so it probably has been taken out. I would think it would probably have been taken out uh, later on because, you know, we're not allowed to say the name and so forth. And again, the name, I think, is actually just pointing to the sun, you know. It's Yehovah who was, is, and is to be, uh, they say. So if that is actually the meaning of the word, you know, who is Yeshua? Well, he who was, is, and is to come. <laughs> you know, it's very, very close related. You know, that's the title Yeshua gives himself in the book of Revelation. So if that's the title and that's actually the same thing that Yehovah actually means, well, <laughs> whoops, a daisy. <laughs> I'm like, oh, so who is the, you know, who is it pointing to? Well, it's pointing to, yeah, Yeshua, I would think. You know, if you if you love the Father, you love the Son. If you don't love the Son, you don't love the Father. You know, anyway, so that's, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's the thing. Uh, I just found also another guy on YouTube that actually looks like he both do Greek and uh, Hebrew and Aramaic. But I think he has actually hit into the... <laughs> You know, he, it seems like he thinks the law of God is now abolished. And why does he do that? Well, big surprise, there's only one. <laughs> Paul, of course, he's using Paul. And because he's using Paul's letters and think that they are, you know, that they are God's word, <laughs> it's just like, uh, then of course he comes to the conclusion that the law is abolished. And he seems like to be a very clever guy. And that's the thing, you know, Satan is very, very, um, <laughs> yeah, he's very good to deceiving people. And he had to, you know, what would you do if you were Satan and these people are, you know, spreading truth around in, in your world in some sense, you know? Uh, what are you going to do? Are you just going to stand by? And who you're going to try to uh, to to disrupt it? You know, to to uh, yeah. You first, you're for, of course going to kill a lot of the believers because the more you can kill and the, and the more of the scriptures or the more of the, the uh, writings you can burn and all that. The less uh, you know, it's harder to actually. But the thing is, of course, even with this, you know, we have overwhelming manuscripts of Greek <laughs> New Testament manuscripts, and that's the thing in regards to. Paul, you know, or Paulus, Shaul, you know, it's still a great witness that Yeshua was actually around. It is a huge witness. You know, he's an outsider, you know, persecuting, yeah, it's like the Roman Catholic Church, right? You know, persecuting the holy, the hope of what is it called? They call the holy, I can't even remember, the so called holy this and holy that. I really like the holy thing, the holy uh, whatever, the holy this, holy that, whatever. Yeah, it's just awful. The holy inquisition, which ran around and killed those that actually, you know, was spreading truth around. <laughs> oh, that doesn't really sound holy to me. That sounds unholy. That an unholy inquisition and so forth. And they used the holy this and holy that and these, you know, big titles and so forth. But anyway, uh, as I see it, I think actually um, Paul was, uh, was the first pope <laughs> in some sense. Uh, but he was very close to the truth, and because he was very close to the truth, he couldn't go that far astray in regard. You know, the popes say true things as well, you know, uh, but they also mix a lot of lies and deceptions and lead you into fallacy. So, uh, uh, anyway, that's something that, uh, you know, the reformers, you know, pretty much knew where to point. <laughs> uh, they pointed to Rome. So anyway, who, who went to Rome? Well, Paul went to Rome. He, you know, he had a longing to get to Rome, apparently. But anyway, that's just my view on it. I can see the, you know, you can see what, what it does to people when they go Pauline. You know, Luther was, you know, really hitting into the Pauline Christian thing. And as I understand it, later on, he may actually have 
found out that there was something, um, you know, he, as I understand it, he stopped quoting Paul, where he actually had quoted Paul all the time. <laughs> and, uh, you know, <laughs> so I think Luther went, you know, he, he may even have went uh, further than Paul. You could really see Satan working, you know, where Luther's saying that Satan is actually, you know, making a bonfire. So, you know, you will actually look at the, on the bonfire instead of actually looking for the truth. And I think he actually was telling truth, but I think he was making the bonfire, you know, and Andreas Bodenstein von Karlstadt and the Anabaptist was, you know, you, you, it, it actually works pretty good because in our days, when we talk about the Reformation, oh, we talk about Luther, right? Luther, Luther this and Luther that and all that. But actually, if you want to have more truth, there was one big reformer that I think was the head of the Reformation that pretty much got, you know, forgotten. And that was Andreas Bodenstein von Karlstadt. I think he had a, had a heart for truth and, and seeking truth. And, uh, you know, it, they started to try to, but, uh, you know, he was also actually, you know, uh, I think he was actually, yeah, the one that actually, mm, uh, he, you know, he was a big player. He was probably Mr. Reformation, you know, not Luther. But Luther took the, you know, he made a big bonfire in some sense. Not saying that, you know, uh, it's pretty, you know, standing against, you know, uh, the, the church system and all that that Luther did was, you know, was pretty good. But when you see his letters, if you find Luther's letters and you put in Andreas, Bodenstein von Karlstedt or Andreas, and find all his letters where he's writing about Andreas, Oh boy, oh boy, yeah. he's claiming that he is the devil and so forth, you know, just uh, led astray by the devil and all that, you know, and clearly Luther is in one of his letters in regards of the, uh, of the in regards of the mass, <laughs> um, he's clearly wrong, Luther is clearly wrong and he's just, you know, he's not, he's not, uh, He's not holding back on bad words in regards of, uh, so that's pretty sad. So anyway, um, but anyway, if, if there wasn't actually Jews from the 12 tribes, the story in regards of taking the Jews to actually translate the, the, the five books of Moses would actually be pretty, uh, you know, falling to the ground, right? And someone had to translate the five books of uh, Moses into Greek. You know, somebody had to do it. So again, it's hmm. so anyway. Uh, it's just uh, just just something I I fell over, and I was thinking, hmm, that's actually because, as I understand it, they actually translated afterwards when they you know first first we have uh, Babylon, and afterwards Babylon is the golden head and so forth, and then we have Medo Persia to overtaking Babylon, so that's the next kingdom and all that. And at that point, the Jews are allowed to go back to the land, you know, at that point. So that would be also the Israelites and the Jews, you know, those, the Northern Kingdom and Southern Kingdom. It's, uh, I think the Bible says something about a written letter to the, those that lives more Northern from Babylon. Uh, you know, so you don't, you don't, you not only have the, the Jews or the Southern Kingdom, you also have an invitation to the Israelites if they want to go. It seems so. They're coming back. They are maybe in regards to the prophecy that two sticks actually becomes one, and they are coming back from the north. You know, they are collected back from the north, and they were taken out for uh, in regards to the north, and that's in regards of the roads and all that. So it seems like the prophecy may actually be fulfilled in regards to two sticks, two sticks becoming one again and going back to Israel. So. So uh, it doesn't seem like there's, uh, in that sense, lost tribes or anything, I think. But anyway, um, so so that would, you know, that would just, uh, in some sense, just verify more that there actually was people from all the tribes. Uh, you know, uh, actually 13 tribes in some sense. We already have three tribes at least in regards of Judah because we have the Levites. And we have the Jews, and then we have the Benjamites, which is also part of the Southern Kingdom. So that's three tribes at least. And then in regards to the Northern, you know, you would you would think that when when it's you know divided into the ten tribes of the North and two tribes of the of the South, and the Levites, of course, that's the thirteen tribe. But anyway, 
you would expect there's probably been some, and, and we also have some evidence in regards of when the Northern Kingdom was taken out, it seems like that people were coming from the Northern Kingdom to the Southern Kingdom, you know, was, were fleeing the, from, from what was going on in the Northern Kingdom. They have found some, some, some in uh, where it, it seems like it, it could be, uh, and if that is the case, then you already have people from, from the Northern, Northern Kingdom going to the southern kingdom and then you already have people from other tribes uh, in the southern kingdom at that point so already there it has you know it's already a mixture of people <laughs> you know uh, and then of course again if you then take them out and again and then then they come back to the land again it just seems like there's a good possibility that there was you know people from all the 12 tribes ah uh, you know just a just maybe I'm wrong, but it, it just seems possible and all uh, the, the things that we have found and the history, yeah, it could absolutely point in that direction. So, and they're just called Jews, you know. <laughs> so anyway, um, so that's just a little pointer. Uh, besides that's nothing really new. I'm just still uh, doing some study in regards to I'm still thinking about should I send my mobile back or not? I have only one chance to do it, but they actually talked about two months, you know, and uh, that I could it could take up to two months, <laughs> like you no know, mobile in two months, you know. Maybe that would actually be a healthy thing. But I have my Bible on my mobile. I have an old mobile. I could just replace and use that. But still, you know, it's just an old mobile. It's just. Not that it doesn't work, but it's just, uh, yeah, it's a little uh, downhill and I need to set it up as well and all that. So, uh, yeah, that's, anyway, um, that's another possibility that I could uh, try to open the mobile up, but I'm not even sure I can do that with the newest update. So, anyway, I'll try to upload this video and see how this go. I actually also need to get some food as well. Of course, the clock on this mobile, it has, that's a weird thing also in regards to Android. You know, all the other mobiles I had didn't actually need to have, you know, ha have access to the internet to actually get the date and the clock correct. It would actually just remember the clock. And the same thing if you actually push on this and uh, have a timer starting or, or stopwatch or whatever or, or an alarm or something and you had turned it off. It would actually just turn it on itself and say, "Hey, the clock is now," you know. And so, uh, but not, not, not this phone. I'm not sure if any any Android phone actually have this feature, which should be a normal feature. You know, every single other telephone I've had in the past, you know, remember the date and the and the and the clock. But this is very. You know, it, it's very easy to get it off, you know, and now it says four o'clock, 4.23, which is absolutely not correct. And, but, you know, it's every time. It's not like, oh, that goes a week and then it's off or, some, or a month and then it goes off or something like that. It's just on the daily basis it goes off. And I don't like to be radiated and so forth, so I turn it off and then I get these uh, weird numbers uh, it, it seemingly doesn't remember where it left off or where you, when you change battery or something like that. So that's an, an annoyance. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the works of Satan to make us occupied in regards of other things than the Bible and all that. Uh, I've used a lot of times in the book of Daniel. And uh, you know, that's actually why I actually put, uh, came to Hosea. Uh, let's go back. I have um, also found out um, I, oh, no, no, that's not Daniel, 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 Daniel. Yep, there we go. In the third year of the rain, I, I'm trying to, you know, I'm actually getting at a point where I begin to, you know, you suck more information and more information and begin to understand what is actually going on and all that. There's still a lot to actually, you know, I've read it and heard it multiple times, so many times, you know, just, and, and okay, so you have three kings, you know, and it's like, who is this guy and who is that guy and whatever and this and whatever, you know, it's just, it, it's it's not that easy to follow along or maybe, you know, at least um, there's a lot of information in it in the book. And it's nice to also apparently know some history as well. So you need to look into history, what actually, 
what is going on and uh, and some uh, I've heard in regards of that that little horn in chapter what is it eight or nine or something like that. Uh, you know, we have the little horn on the beast, the, the fourth beast, uh, which is coming out from Rome. So that's not, shouldn't be that uh, difficult. But the next little horn seems to either come out of, of, the, uh, of the four, of the four uh, kingdoms, uh, of one of the four kingdoms uh, in regards of Alexander. So that would be the Greek, one of the four kingdoms. But... As I read in regards of Newton things, it's actually the Roman uh, that goes to the east and the south and, and, and against the Holy Land. Um, so that's two theories. And I don't know enough history to verify or de-verify. I've, I've, I've looked into it hours and hours and hours to get the... And I must say in regards of the history of the Greek guy, it seems like it's the history... Pretty much fit that guy, and uh, pretty pretty good actually. Um, so it could actually it could be the I'm not sure where they get this um, that this is a forspring of all for what the Antichrist will will be. Maybe it is. Of course, there would be probably be some teaching in it when you know when we learn things from God's word and all that, we of course grow in understanding and all that he, you know, that's teaching us uh, his ways and he, you know, he's the creator and he probably know how to teach us things, you know, uh, that is valuable for us to actually understand. But um, yeah, so that's, that's pretty good. Uh, um, it's, uh, so I'm still trying to, get a hold of some of them. and then, then of course they have i'm not sure in regards to the numbers either then they have like 2100 days or what is it i can't remember uh, in regards to taking the and uh, jesus or yeshua is yeshua is also pointing to this abomination thing and how does that how does that work you know when it when is it going to be is it going to still be a future thing and all that I just, you know, you have a lot of pieces that needs to be put together and, you know, you you have a small idea of the things, but actually pointing them directly is just mm, a little more difficult. Of course, and the more pieces you can actually put in place, the, the piece, you know, that's the same thing. When you have a puzzle, what do you call a puzzle piece, and you put the pieces into place. And the more puzzle pieces you actually have in place and, you know, match on the thing, the easier it actually is to see the picture and not be too confused because if you have, you know, you, you if you have, you know, the more pieces you have in place, the more likely you actually are to understand what is going on and not making a mistake, you know. So that's why I also think it's it's uh, it's important to actually try to get as close to God's law as possible, because when we go when we come, you know, closer, you know, for example, not not on purpose, actually doing things that are wrong, you know, changing our ways to you know what is the ways of God, you know, keeping the Sabbath, for example. That's one thing in regards of the number seven as well. And when we begin to do the things that God wants us, there's some things that we're going to pick up on. But if we're not going, for example, the feast of God, we have the feast of God, which is like the Passover, the unleavened day of bread, and the, the feast of weeks, and the Yom Teruah, the day of trumpet, and Yom Kippur, uh, day of atonement, and we have Sukkot. The feast of Sukkot and so forth, and the and the, and the last great day. <laughs> but the thing is, if we're not going to keep those, we'll miss the target. You know, we'll miss the mark. And if we actually start those feast days on the wrong time, you know, the, the God said, you know, this is the uh, this is the beginning of the year, Rosh Hashanah, in the spring, not in the fall. So the Jews keep it in the fall. But they will then miss the, you know, even if they keep the feast, uh, they will actually miss the mark because they'll have already corrupted when this is to begin. So, you know, making uh, things upside down and all that. So again, if we just do what God tells us, I think we'll get closer to the truth and we'll have the pieces in the puzzle put down. 
and they will just, you know, okay, we have a puzzle piece here and the end and all that. And from there on, we can, we can understand more of the ways of God and his picture and what he's telling us uh, because we have less, what do you call it in math? You know, you have less unknown uh, possibilities. Uh, on what do you? I can't remember what. But you have something in math where you have, you know, where you can have, uh, or or maybe in physics or something like that. If you can pinpoint the different values and get less and less, uh, you know, if you know some of the values, you can maybe get to the next value. You know, if you have like a what is it called where you have. You calculate this x or y, and you find out x is equal this. And that's something that isn't there something something where it's actually an x and a y where you have more. Uh, I can't remember, but in any way, you have the x, and you're trying to find out what x is equal to, and then you, you know, you have all the other numbers, and you calculate downward and all that, and then you find out x is equal this. You know, so. Camera. It's, it's a long time where I actually made these things, but I think it's, this, it's a little of the same in regards of, uh, you know, the scriptures. When you have more of the numbers in some sense and you have one number that is, you know, you don't know, sometimes you can calculate it, uh, you know, by knowing the other numbers and uh, get to it and so forth. So that's great. Um, so also in regards of, you know, when you're listening to people, it's like, mm, can you actually verify that by the scriptures? You know, you know, the thing is, there's so many weird ideas out there, you know, who is this and that and so forth. And, you know, I heard, for example, uh, some time ago, where one would say, well, it's, you know, in regards of this city, that it would actually be Jerusalem. And then another say, well, it's actually was it mega or something like that in regards to the Mohammedans? And I was like, well, this, the, the horn is coming out of Rome. So it seems like the system, there's things going on in regards of Rome. You know, the fourth beast is Rome, right? It's, it's, it's Roman, you know. So where do we have Romanism today? Well, that's the Vatican. <laughs> so anyway, I, you know, just... Um, who slaughtered, you know, a lot of, and, if, and again, if, if that's, I don't know, but it, it could be, uh, uh, you know, there's, there's one source uh, that says that Mohammedanism actually was just created by the Vatican uh, or Rome, but, you know, to slay the true believers. Uh, and of course, that would then, the count of the Mohammedans slaying Christians uh, or the believers in Yeshua would then actually just, you know, be put on Rome, you know, and of course the woman riding the beast is drunken with the blood of the saints, so when every road leads to Rome, right? <laughs> so anyway, it's, um, and it seems like the reformers also knew where to point, you know, just think about it, Rome didn't want us to have the scriptures, they could burn you <laughs> if you had the scriptures, you know, burn you on the stake, you know, what is that of, you know, that's just... Has that anything to do with Yeshua? Absolutely not. The, you know, we see the disciples going around spreading the word, not hiding it away and saying, oh, you don't, you know, you're too stupid to understand this. So, you know, you, you know you're not allowed to have this. You know, just this is an abomination and it's, uh, it's evil. And it's, you know, it's Romanism, <laughs> paganism, you know, just corrupted Christianity or whatever you want to call it you know with all their fallacies um, anyway so I should probably get over and buy some food so I can get some food and uh, yeah that's pretty good I'm not sure if it's raining at the moment yeah it's raining a little yeah so and the thing is, I'm not sure even when, you know, where to start in some sense. There seems to be so much corruption in the world and we don't have any, any, any uh, side that the Jesuits are actually. And then of course we have the people, the truthers is still out there and that's nice to have a lot of truth and all that. But they are, even if they seek truth, you know, they, they are being, 
they're being taken in the wrong direction. And hopefully one can actually, uh, you know, they believe these weird stories of weird things that, you know, even if they are seeing these manifestations of demons and this and all that, but they get to the wrong conclusion. <laughs> You know, they conclude some weird thing, you know, that aliens or whatever. And I was like, well, these entities are, you know, fallen angels. You know, the demons around us, apparently, according to the Bible, is fallen angels. It's, uh, you know, it's, 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 uh, that's my view on it anyway. From the Bible, it seems like these are fallen angels. But in any case, these de demons are around and they are pretty good to deceiving us. And, you know, the, they're not stupid. That's the thing. People would think that, oh, they're stupid. No, these entities are so clever. At least some of those that I had contact with, uh, you know, or these, those that I had contact with was so clever to deceive me, you know, to lead me in the wrong direction. I, and that's the thing, you know, because I have the experience of actually having contact with them, I cannot deny it. You know, people can say, hey, you are a loony and you are this and you never this and that. Well, I have the experience of it. You know, I experienced it. <laughs> you didn't. And if you want to say that I'm lying and so forth, and, uh, you know, that's, you know, you can believe what you want. You know, it's just not my table. But... I'm, I'm, I can reject what I have experienced, so that's, you know, uh, and, you know, many other people have contact with these entities, which is not something we should do, because they're leading us astray. <laughs> uh, it's very sad. There's a battle going on, and uh, we are all in it, you know, whether we want to be it or not. We are all in a battle. It may not look at, look at it on the surface, but I think it was some of the Anabaptists that I actually told about where if you actually begin to stir up in regards to the truth and all that, well, you know, uh, Satan will begin to do his work, you know, pretty quickly. You know, it may actually look, you know, softly on the surface and nothing going on. But when you begin to get into a lot of truth and all that and people begin to wake up, oh, Satan will stir up, you know, he will, you know, begin to stir up the and, and um, you know, help to try to uh, persecute you, which, of course, is the way of the Christian. You know, we are to, just to stand on truth, and uh, we, would ex we should expect persecution and people hating us and so forth um, for standing on the truth, uh, for standing as a witness, you know. So, anyway, so I probably should stop now. Just talking, talking, talking. Oh, oh yeah, by the way, I was looking into, I have this, uh, and I, pro I need to buy it. Um, that's the thing, I've tried to, you know, all the things that I actually not, uh, that I haven't paid for and all that, try to find it and delete it if it's not free and so forth. And I found out that this, this is probably not legal to have. It is a Bible and TF92. I'm not sure what that is, but I found out it was actually the Sundavan version of the Bible, it seems like. And maybe it's an older version or something like that. You can actually get, as I understand it, some of the software where you can, uh, but I don't want to have internet connection on and all that because of the, uh, because of the radiation and so forth. So... I would like, uh, you know, that's the thing uh, again, you know, why why do we have all these, of course, Satan again, you know, but all the updates and so forth, you know, I probably already have a lot of, you know, it's updating all the time and using so much, you know, it's like, you know, in the older times, you know, the update were usually not that big and it was just a small one, even if the, even if the software was a, a big, you know, uh, many megabytes and all that, the patch would probably only be like three or four more megabytes or something like that, correcting some of the things and all that. But today it's like uh, the updates are just coming all the time. And again, instead of actually, you know, that's the thing also, as I understand it with Play Store, you cannot actually go back. You cannot go back to an older update. Uh, there are some portals where you actually have different versions of a program. Uh, so you can actually in just install older soft, uh, software versions because you never know in regards of all these updates well you know you never know if there's something that 
you don't like or they corrupted or they changed something or whatever you know or you know an update actually you know pretty much destroyed the program from working and then you know maybe they corrected something and then another thing broke and you know it's just it goes on and on and you can use so much time on that it's just sad that you you know the older programs works pretty good you know that's why do we need to update all the time there's no there's no point in it but anyway um uh, it's just you know using a lot of uh, let's see for example it's when did I last update? Like one day ago or something like that. Let's try to go to. Uh, I'll turn the internet on. I see. Uh, I think it was yesterday I did it. Let's see if we're checking for updates. Let's see. Oh, 12 updates available already. 12. You know, and actually also for Android for VLC, that's actually maybe it works this time. The problem is. They actually had a problem in regards of VLC, which is a player for, for what, what do you call it? Um, for actually looking at, at, uh, at movies and so forth. And then the other thing is, then it broke one way. <laughs> and then I found out on the internet, they actually had an update, which was not found on the Play Store. And I was like, oh, great. Then I updated that. And uh, then another thing broke. Then one thing was corrected and another thing broke. I can't remember what it was actually that broke, but but now it can play. You know, if you if you plot, try to play Isofas, the screen will just jump many weird places and all that. Uh, oh yeah, the the other issue it had, it couldn't play MP4 files. I think it's called. It stopped playing MP4 files, and it's just the main file uh, system that the mobile is using and all that. So you could you couldn't play MP4 files. I was like, okay, what is going on? The thing is that they. Do they even test the things before they actually, uh, you know, give out the updates? Uh, apparently, it seems like no or something like that. But then I found another update which was actually a little newer, but not on Play Store, but on the internet. And I downloaded that. And yeah, now I could play MP4 files. But then I had issues with the ESO files, you know, messing up when you try to play an ESO file, making the screen go, you know... Uh, it ne it has never been good when you play an ESO file, but you know it actually has worked in regards to the screen. But now it's just jumping around. You can you can find, you know, let's see if I can show you. Uh, but of course you never know what it does if it actually corrects or whatever. Um, if I go to one of the let's see video, and this is the Visual Bible. No, actually, what is the vi oh yeah that's true X. Yeah, I could take one of them, but let's take uh, this one. And these are legal things that are bought on CD and made to ISO files. Um, so let's take VLC and say OK. Great. And here. OK, it actually looks like it actually now is on screen. Hmm. OK, let's try to uh, then uh, take one of the... Let's see if it wants to make the mistake this time or not. You know, then you need to push it sometimes and then it works. Oh, now, it looks like it actually seems to work now. To uh, that it actually, actually pre has yeah, actually pretty good information. But, because oh, it actually uh, seems to uh, work at the moment. Uh, you know, it began to, you know, jump around in regards to the screen and so forth. And, uh, you know, it's just, you know, I mean, apparently it now works. Let's try another one. Let's try this one. See if I can get it to do it. Okay, still seems to actually work now. Yeah, again, that's the that's the thing with technology. You know, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't work. And that's the weird thing in regards to things. Why is it working sometimes? And it's really weird because it hasn't actually worked before um, in regards to that update. Maybe it has updated before or something like, again. You know, I don't know. But apparently it doesn't make the mistake at the moment. Uh, and that's that's the thing when you want to when you when you want the system to make the mistake. Oh, then it works, right? <laughs> Could I please just drop this? Could you please stop playing? Stop. Stop. Well, now okay, now I can't stop it. <laughs> Did it stop now? Let's just turn. So anyway, I couldn't make it the mistake, but. 
no, it's still okay. Maybe that's another mistake. It can't stop the, it <laughs> can't stop the rec, it <laughs> can't stop the VLC now. It's still running. I can turn off the sound, but it's still running in the background. Oh no, it's still okay. So anyway, so that's the thing in regards of all these updates. You know, you 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 update all the time, and you see like 20 megabytes, 18 megabytes, 28 megabytes, 31 megabytes. Uh, it's just, just why, is, why are they, you know, so big? It's, it's, it's just so overwhelming how much, how many megabytes you need to this and that and so forth. It just seems, uh, yeah. Uh, maybe it's because they, you know, because people have so much, you know, bandwidth anyway, so they just, you know it's just easier for them or whatever but beforehand you just got a small patch and it just pretty much did a lot of yeah i don't know just, and and again patches or updates was not that you know uh, uh it wasn't that uh, you know it didn't came around you know so many times and i was just every day you have updates every day and you have a uh, updates for this and update for that and it just uh, yeah and again, when you're just sitting with the program and, you know, it's if you have it on auto and something, and then something breaks and a program is like, oh, because it updated, you know, and then the program doesn't work anymore or it changes the program. So, so, and it worked pretty good for you already and you didn't actually need anything from the update. It just was running fine and all that. Or maybe it's running fine now and then it updates and then it becomes unstable, you know. It's just, and it's, it's the insanity, yeah. Uh, of absolute insanity so that's pretty much it now of course why didn't what did you know, i've had this mistake so many times and now it doesn't want to make the mistake uh, it's just great you know but maybe maybe there actually has been an update on it i don't know uh, let's see uh i probably can't remember the number anyway i think it was let's see uh the number uh no a three point zero two I think that would be yeah the one I downloaded and then apparently now there's an update for it yeah okay so it seems like now it works but probably will fail again uh passing media okay I think that's in regards of checking the the things I have on the phone so that's pretty good whatever. So, so I have in regards of HTML, if you want to do such things, uh, there was something in regards of Jewish scriptures, true line, yeah. Well, I don't have much more to say actually, uh, just. Uh, and of course, it seems like also because of, you know, installed everything again what do we call it because i i reset the phone and all that when i need to search now if i'm going to something like uh that is not standard or whatever i need to make all these indexes again and i'm not sure why didn't they just make one index thing up in the options or something like that uh oh maybe maybe i can actually do that re-index Oh, yeah, okay, so it only takes one at a time. It would be nice if the program had, like, e re index everything, you know? <laughs> Just, you know, use it because re indexing things can, you know, if you, 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 it takes some time. Um, okay, this pretty goes pretty. Not that, uh, but still, when you're doing research and all that, and you just, you need to wait for it, what does it take, like? 60 uh, 30 seconds or a minute or something like that or if you need to do it like 20 times it's like 20 minutes and sometimes it actually looks like it takes longer um why just uh, and i'm like why don't why not just have a button to take everything you have and do it you know if you have like all these you know why not just make a if if everyone is you know if you need to do it like four times or something i'm not sure how four times let's see no, doesn't want to do it there. Doesn't want to do it there. Oh, maybe. No. Okay. 
Uh, let's take another one. Let's try that. No. Uh oh. Entire Bible. Why can't I? Oh, it doesn't. Okay. Huh. Oh, I can't get it to do. But it would be nice with just one bottom to actually just go, uh, go, uh, go into all of it. So I stop this video. I talked way too much. If it's actually still running, yeah, it actually is. Okay.